What's up, you guys? So, I am sitting here in Juan Valdez. Ah! Juan Valdez, right here. And it is the coffee hub. It's like the Starbucks of Colombia. And I don't know if they have this in like Mexico. I don't remember if I saw it in Mexico. But I just wanted to talk really quickly about um, what is happening right now in the US uh, with the labor market. So right now um, we have, you know, Democrats and the Biden US Department of Labor um, pushing for uh, to eradicate the gig economy and uh, their logic is and you know it's always you know people that don't understand economics don't understand money um, but are trying to be helpful you know it's not like they're evil villains that are trying to take everything away and trying to destroy you they're 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 nice people that are trying to provide solutions to problems that they clearly don't understand. Um, but basically, what they're what is happening is they want to they want to destroy the gig economy. Um, they want to they and and they want to make and and in nicer terms, they want to make it harder for companies to employ you employ independent contractors that's in nicer terms they want to make independent contractors harder to employ without providing full-time benefits so the logic is well look at these guys that work for uber look at people that work for like these you know part-time contractor stuff look at the guy that's that's mowing your lawn you know he's not a full-time lawnmower for you but like so he has to do individual jobs in order to make his money, but like he doesn't get to have benefits because he's not full time. He doesn't get to have health insurance. He doesn't get to have like a pension plan or anything like that. And so he's basically falling behind compared to the guy that's like a nine to five worker that's completely taken care of by his full time boss. So that's the logic and it's very nice. And, um, but so the thing is, that people don't understand is that a lot of people want to be working in the gig economy because, and, and, and the thing is like a lot of these laws have already been put in place in states like California, like years ago, like 10 years ago, they, um, they basically banned uh, unpaid internships. And people get excited when the, when the unpaid, unpaid internships are banned because they're like, oh wow, this means that we're gonna get paid in our internships. And it's like, no, this means that you're gonna get fired and it's gonna be much harder to get an internship because they don't have money to pay every single intern. And the reason, the reason why people do unpaid internships is because they're trying to have access to a certain market. It's not necessarily because they're trying to make a whole lot of money right off the bat. That's what internships are for. Internships are training. It's training and sometimes you get paid because just because you have to get by but it's the whole reason people do it is because they don't because they're they're not there they're getting paid in training they're not there to make a whole lot of money if you want to make a whole lot of money don't go for an internship go for a full specialized job and then on top of that um they're pushing and you know nina turner she's uh, you know, I actually met her and hung out with her for like, she's a Democrat politician in DC. Um, she's a very nice lady, but she also clearly does not understand money. Um, she, her plan to fight with inflation in the United States is that she wants to raise, she wants um, the US government to raise the federal minimum wage to $25 an hour. $25 an hour? for the federal minimum wage. So like, it sounds nice, but just think about how expensive everything is right now. And then imagine that like tripling. Imagine it more than tripling. Like in Texas, imagine that. Yeah, imagine that more than tripling because right now the minimum wage, the federal minimum wage is $7.25. Because Texas doesn't have like a state minimum wage and, and other other states too. I don't know about other states. I just know mostly about Texas because I think Texas is still the best for business in the United States. 
but um, a lot of states don't have a, a federal minimum wage. And so those states, everything is cheaper in those states. You know, the states with higher minimum wages, everything tends to be more expensive. That's just the way economics work. When the minimum wage is higher, when the barrier to entry is higher, it's harder to get jobs. When it's harder to get jobs, there's more people scrambling for the same job. When there's more people scrambling for the same job, the employers are able to be more picky and choosy. They're able to treat you not the way you want to. They're able to get away with more because there's a lot more people scrambling for the same jobs because the barrier to entry is higher. So I don't know if I'm making sense and I hope I am. Uh, my, my goal is really to just clear this up for people. Why is it that when the minimum wage was $12 an hour, more it was like $12.50 an hour in Washington DC, I was still getting paid less money than when the minimum wage is $7.25 in Texas, working for a restaurant as a waitress, because in Texas, there were so many job opportunities because the federal minimum wage is so low. So there's, it's, it's, so things are just cheaper in Texas. So when things are cheaper, more businesses are able to operate easier, right? And when more businesses are able to operate easier, there's just more jobs. There's more, there's so many jobs. In fact, the problem in DC was like for $12 and 50 cents an hour, which didn't even pay for like my cost of living because it's so expensive in DC, for that amount, we we're all scrambling for these jobs and we we're still treated like absolute shit. The, the, the restaurant I worked at in Texas, we were actually treated so nicely, so nicely. And we got paid so much, so much more. Like at least, and, and for much shorter hours, we really, it, it was not nearly as stressful as that DC job, which was like from 6.30 in the morning until like 2 a.m. Like we, like we didn't sleep. We were just there the whole day, especially imagine like double shifts. So I think uh, it's gonna get way worse. Like if, if they were to implement, I mean, 25 an hour, I don't even think anyone's gonna go for that because it's so ridiculous. But if they were to implement even like half of that, even like, like 12 and a half an hour, like straight across the board, federal, everyone's gonna be in deep shit. And every, the prices of everything is gonna go up, first of all. You're gonna get your 12.50 an hour, but because things work proportionately, because you know your boss still has to make, he has to break even, like forget about making money, your boss has to break even at the very least, he's gonna to have to raise the prices of everything. The place that you're working is a service, a farm, a, like anything, like a, a, anything that, everything is affected by this. So the prices of everything is gonna go up. And it, it all, it's all like connected. And so basically what you're gonna be seeing is everything, the price of everything is gonna go up. And like, honestly, that's great for someone like me because I, right now I'm not living in the United States. I am not using US healthcare. I'm not using anything there. All I'm doing is I'm running real estate out of the US. And you know what happens when the price of everything goes up? The price of real estate goes up. And you know what happens when the price of real estate goes up? That means more money for me to be able to play in other markets. So there's actually one kind of person that benefits from inflation and that's the person that holds tangible assets, not labor. And that's me. Anyone like me and mostly like people that own real estate. And people don't realize that um, because they're stupid. <laughs> but I'm telling you that if they raise the minimum wage, $25 an hour, if they destroy the gig economy, if they make things really hard for people to get jobs, and then they simultaneously increase the prices of everything, the price of my assets are gonna go up, just the market value, and I'm gonna have more money to play in markets that are much cheaper. And you know what? There are plenty of markets that are much cheaper and 
there are plenty of Westerners playing in those markets, and there's a lot of a lot because the economies and around the world are becoming more accessible. Things are becoming more transparent, and it's not as crazy wild west as people like to believe. It's actually there's a lot to do outside of the United States. There's a lot of money to be made outside the U.S., and there's a lot of value to be created, but it, it, it's a little bit less regulated, which is great. If you're a new person, you know, if you're if you're a new person and you don't have $25 an hour to pay your janitor, right? Like $25 is like what some people get paid in a week in other countries. So like, it's just, why wouldn't you go out? Why wouldn't you try to make it somewhere else? And I'm not saying this for my personal gain. Because like I said, it's in my best interest for everybody to stay put in the U.S. and for the prices of my assets to keep going up, for me to keep the benefit, for you guys to become, to suffer and have to pay more money for everything and just get squeezed. But I also like care about my viewers and I care about you guys knowing the truth. And the truth of the matter is that like, <laughs> this system is so dumb, like the people, it's dumb it's dumb for you guys it's dumb for the people that think that they're being helped with the gig economy being destroyed with these democrat policies you know with like 25 dollars minimum wage with any kind of minimum wage honestly it's just dumb that people think that they're going to be helped it's like it's cute in some way because i know that they're they they want answers but this is very much not the answer and um i think if you're like me and, and you don't want to get squeezed and stuck in that rat race i would highly encourage you to take just one trip out anywhere mexico south america i don't know asia and and see what's happening out there it's not as crazy and dingy as you might think i mean there's still crazy shit happening but it's you have a lot more opportunities there's a lot more places out there that you can make it and that's what I'm looking into also for myself. Um, anyway, hope this was helpful and see you guys in the next video.